Hello, I'm Mix Mars and Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, with my little tiny Riley boy. Hi, Riley boy. Hi. We've been for a lovely little dog walk with Pip, and Pip's done her very first walk off the lead today. So she's had a, about a three mile walk around the woods and been, been completely off the lead, talking to other dogs, running and jumping and mucking about, but has been coming back when she's been told. So the recall has come on quite well, so she's learning. Just been to Pets R Us or Toys R Us, Pets R Us to buy Hold a up. new, um, new, uh, yeah, a new ball throwing Hold thing up. and a new squeaky hot dog. Riley bought a squeaky hot dog which is good. Uh, thank you very much also to David who bought Riley Boy a card for his birthday and gave him a £10 postal voucher. Um, it's in it's indoors, it came yesterday. Um, so thank you very much indeed, David, that much appreciated, buddy boy. It was just come after, just after Riley Boy's birthday, so I thought we'd give a quick little shout out there. So you've got £10 to spend tomorrow, that be right? Yeah. Go, where are we gonna go? B and M, cool. So in today's video, have you just pulled your lawnmower out of your shed and it absolutely refuses to start, or it start a little, run a little tiny bit when you prime it, or get a bit of choke, and then it cuts out afterwards? If it does, then this could be the video for you. A friend of mine reached out to me just the other day, lives quite close, and said, "Mick, my lawnmower is broke. My wife is nagging me to cut a lawn. I bought a brand new lawnmower last year. It is brand spanking new. I only use it once or twice, and he put it away last season, and now it won't start. It won't fire up. So." Let's get down on Dirty and fire that machine up if we can, see what it's doing, and try and get it fixed for him so he can then get his lawnmower cut, uh, get his lawn cut, and his wife can get off his back. So that'd be cool. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mother's and Mother Man, hit the old subscribe button, hey. whack the old bell, hit notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get them down dirty and let's drag this lawnmower out of the shed, see what it's doing, and try and get it to run right. Yeah, okay, buddy, see you in a bit then, mate. So out here is a little mower in question. Uh, it's a web, I think. Yes, yeah, a web. Brand spanking new. Um, we've got a 139cc uh, overhead valve gasoline engine on it. Um, date on this machine, 2021. So it's not brand spanking new, but it is, it's, he said he bought it brand new last year. But um, it might be just like a year older manufacturer, but it does look very, very clean indeed. Um, but it's just not running right at all. Now he dragged it out of the out of the shed a couple of days ago, and he said, "Mick, it just it just don't it just don't want it." So what I'm going to do is try and put you on the perch on me tripod. There you go. I'm going to try and fire this machine up. I'll just show you what it's doing. <clears throat> so many people just put their machines away and do nothing with it. So two or three pumps. Pull the dead man in. And that's it. Is your lawnmower doing that? Well, if it does, what you can do is you can just try and overcome it by continually priming that bulb. Give it about 10 pumps, right? Now, when you're gonna pull it, you're gonna jump around really fast and try and keep, keep priming it, okay? Just to try and keep it running. So sometimes by doing that, you can clear, clear the, the issue. But as you can see, this is not doing that, so it needs to go up onto the bench. Okay, lawnmower now up on the bench. Let's just remove the HT lead, because we don't want this machine to fire up whilst, uh, whilst we're working on it. So just remove the HT lead, push it out of the way, so it definitely can't get in, come into contact with the, uh, with the spark plug. And then what we want to do is that we're going to go straight into a carburetor clean. The main reason why these machines don't want to start up is because the carburetor um, is either blocked, it's fouled, or something along that line. Generally because you haven't pulled the, uh, the fuel out of last year, or uh, you didn't run it dry, or anything along those lines, in other words, you didn't winterize it. Or you just use a poor quality fuel like E10, where moisture is attracted to uh, to the petrol and then what ends up is you end up having a line of petrol a line of fuel ethanol and water in there So I'm just going to remove this um, This carburetor cover and on the back there's going to be a little tiny rubber pipe just there that comes off and that just sits on that little tiny breather Just there, okay 
With that now taken off, this is a really, really clean machine. This hasn't been used a lot at all. I'm going to loosen off the um, the fuel clip just there, just remove that. I'm going to get a pair of forceps. Now, if you haven't got a pair of forceps, you can use pretty much anything you can. Maybe a set of mold grips. You've got a pair of mold grips, you can use those. Just going to clamp that off, just so just so the fuel refuses to um, to keep running. In fact, those forceps, I think the teeth are a little bit worn on those. That's uh, like a new, new set of forceps. Let's just try and put it in an angle so it's going to catch and not get in my way. So with that now done, I can now remove um, the the fuel line itself. Okay, the fuel line itself, the little tiny um, hose just comes off it just here. Okay, and I've got a, a special pair of, of um, hose remove pliers, but you can use anything. Just make sure you're very, very careful. Try and get a bit of a twist first, a bit of a twist, and then just try and leave it off without damaging anything. That's the idea. You can use a flat -headed screwdriver just behind it, but just try and just remove it without damaging. That's the idea. Now, it should be minimal fuel come out of there because I have actually clamped that fuel off. But all I'm going to do is get a little tiny rag and just put that over top. This, this is a, quite a new mower, this one for my, my matey. He's sent it to me to do a video on. So there you go, that's that bit done. Now we've got to do now is just move this governor arm forward, okay? And then there's a little tiny clip. Let's move that out of the way so you can see a bit better. There's a little tiny clip that just clips onto the top of a carburetor just here. On some, it may be actually be a spring as well. If there's a spring on there, then just, just, just remove the, uh, the spring also, okay? But on this one, there's just literally just a, a governor arm. So push the throttle open, get hold of the, the little tiny rod, just, just lift it out, put it around the back somewhere out of the way. And then that carburetor then will just withdraw, withdraw all the way off, and there's your carby. How simple is that? Nice and quick and easy. Let me make a bit of room, and we'll go for a bit of a carburetor clean on here, get this one done, and then hopefully that'll be the end of this machine. A quick and easy little fix, but to clean the carburetor can be a bit tricky, so if you're not sure, keep watching. Okay, carburetor now up on the old, uh, up on the old bench. This is gonna be quite a, a quick carburetor clean if I can get it and give as much detail as I can. I'm trying to use a camera just in front of me so you get a much better view of what I'm actually doing, okay? And hopefully you'll get a bit more better light and all that sort of good stuff. So to, please just bear with me just uh, as I get sorted out. So first of all, get your 10 mil spanner socket, whatever you've got, and you've got a little tiny nut just here. There's two of these to do, one at the side and one at the bottom. So just unwind that one very quickly. And then unwind the one at the bottom as well. And I'm gonna try and tip this carburetor up just ever so slightly, because I wanna try and catch whatever is in this carb I want to try and catch it out, okay? So if I tip it onto its side and use a nice white cloth, you should be able to see what, what, if there's any gunk inside there. Loosen it off very gently. That actually looks really, really, really good inside there, okay? No problems at all. A little bit of rust for quite a newish machine, but there's no water in there. It was a little bit of water just right at the very, very back. Can you see that? Literally, let me just get a pointer. Just to show you, and this is this is just to, just to prove the point. So right at the very very back, where was it? Uh, there it is. There, I'm trying to bring it in a touch. Just literally, just there it is. Right at the tip of tip of my pointer. There's a little tiny tiny bit of water just there, right at the end. There's a the water there. See it? See it floating about? There's a the water. And that is the main problem when using a cheaper fuel. So this is quite good in here. To be fair, I'm going to just remove this little tiny float pin. Take that out. I'm then going to remove the float itself. Now inside here is a little tiny, tiny, tiny jet. Just in there, you see it? Just inside here. Little tiny jet. Now that little tiny jet, that's a flat headed um, screw, effectively. And all you've got to do is just remove with a screwdriver, just remove that jet out. And the biggest problem is, is that hole in the center, that would be blocked. Now what you can do, just do it quick and dirty, you can literally just um, get a, a tip cleaner and literally just try and file that um, that jet out and then move on with your day. But I like to try and do a proper job if I can, use a flat-headed drive, make sure it fits right, I mean, just literally just, oh, that come out really easy. Unscrew that, that, that main jet, it'll unscrew, and get a bit of a tap. There's the main jet. Now inside there also be a little tiny emulsion tube. You can see right at the very, very back here, inside this carby, there's a little tiny emulsion tube right at the very, very back, just around about there, you see it? Little tiny brass jet, uh, brass tube sticking up, that's your emulsion tube. And that with a flat drive, if you just push on that, that'll just pop down a bit, get a bit of a tap, and there's your emulsion tube just there. So that's got to come out. And then the last thing to come out on this, on this carby would be a little tiny um, slow circuit just here. 
So these are very, very similar to the Honda styles, okay? Unscrew this screw here. You want the other side of that when you screw it back in. You want about two or three threads out the other side of that, okay, guys, when, uh, when you put it back in. Take that out, and there's a little tiny slow circuit jet here. Just screw that, just tweeze it up, and then that will come out. And inside there, let me have it. Yeah, inside there will be a little tiny jet as well, okay? And just inside there. And if that's blocked, it won't run, and if this is blocked, that won't run either. And you see this jet here, there's a little tiny hole in there, not massive, okay, but there's a little tiny hole in there. These also need to be free on here as well, okay? All these, all these little holes need to be jetted. So what I need to do with this is in my drawer of many things, I'm trying to be as good as I can because the camera is right in front of me. Let me know what you think of a new camera view, guys. It is really hard for me to do it because the camera is right in front. I'm actually using a camera to do the recording. Let's see what I'm doing. I quite like the close-up. What I would like is just a, something just to give a bit of a better view I can actually do it myself. So with a pair of file tip cleans, you get this about three pound off of eBay uh, or Amazonian. Just give, just find the smallest one and just start poking in the holes. A little bit of file, find each hole. There's about eight, eight, eight or ten to do. Okay, so file away. Hi. Yes, honey. All right, sweetheart, no worries. That's Mrs. P calling me and saying my dinner is ready, but I don't want to get this lawnmower done today if I can. Just going to try and squeeze that one in there. It's a bit tight in there. I don't really want to go in there for some reason. It goes. Does it go? Yeah. So file them up. We all want a damn good poke. That's that one. There's that one there that's not brilliant. It's really hard to do in front of a camera because my camera has got like a little tiny um, bracket right in the center, which is where I would like it to be just one side, to be lush. Let's see what I'm sort of doing just with, just with a camera, you see. Okay, so that's that one done. Now this one here, this main jet, see a little tiny hole there, look, yeah, see a little tiny hole? I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. So if you just find the next size up file, which would probably be, mm, could be that one. So look at the size of it now, yeah? I'm gonna put a file in there. That's too big. I'll go next size down again then. And all I'm going to do is just going to file up that hole. Now I'll just put a bit of sideways pressure on there. That's all I'm doing. Nothing too crazy. And now look how big that hole is now. See how big that is? Now it's not massive in, in, in all things comparison, but it's bigger, right? I'm going to try and scrape just along, the, just along the inside face as well of this jet. Just on the inside face, because sometimes the, the, the ethanol sits up on, on this top bit. Just go a bit of a clean up there. Okay, quick little push through. Yeah, I think we like that, don't we? Yeah, good. So that's that one done. And then this one here, this little tiny um, slow sucker jet, you need to get a little tiny um, drill bit to fit in there. Let me find it and I'll come back to you in two seconds. Right, I found my drill bits. Now, I, the, this is what I use. These are called uh, Union Tool, okay? These are really, really, really tiny little, tiny little thumb drills. Now, that's the one I use. It's actually broken off this one as for me Quantums, the orange one, but the little tiny pink one at the end. That's the one I use for um, cleaning these little tiny jets out. And all you can do is you just put that straight into the hole, okay? Straight into there, it goes straight in, and you can see it just sat just inside there. See it? See it sitting in there? And just with a little tiny bit of sideways pressure, all we're doing is just, just, just gonna start just to clean that, that, that slow little circuit out. Now we're not actually drilling nothing out here, just we're just, just reopening up the hole again. So a little tiny bit of sideways pressure. Just let you just hanging on, that's all I'm doing. I notice I haven't used any type of cleaner yet. Nothing. Okay. I will do in a bit. Now these O-rings are quite important. You don't want to lose losing these O-rings either. If those O-rings are missing, check inside the carburetor, just inside this hole here, because it might be sat inside there. Okay. I wouldn't recommend using carburetor cleaner at this point because these these O-rings will expand, and if they expand, yeah, that is that. So I tend to use a bit of WD-40 on most of my machines. Lots of people I know use all different types of cleaner, but I use WD-40. Pretty much always have. Get your WD-40, and it's a little tiny squirt. And what you're looking for, you're looking for that WD-40 to go through that hole, just, just through the side. So we'll keep an eye on it. Just gonna do it very gently. There you go, see it going through the hole? That's what you want. You want just to go through the hole. That way you know that that is actually running. Okay? Once that one's done, you just want to clean up your emulsion tube. A tube? 
a motion tube yeah and just give it a little bit of a just cover some of the holes up make sure they're all running if none of them are, if one of them isn't running right then literally just um give it a tiny poke through okay but that's good and then the main jet i'll just run out out, out, out the front there it goes lovely that's running nice lovely so that pretty much is a carburetor itself cleaned now you can now go through there are one or two more holes on this carburetor that perhaps you might just want to run some stuff through. Just, just a guarantee it is that it's none of its blocks. There's a hole here. Run that through. That come out the bottom. And then the other one will come out the slow idle circuit, which is just around here. Give that a nice good run. So they're all okay. You can run some down through the map through the top if you like. It doesn't make a lot of difference there. And then down through the main feed. I don't want to squirt the camera now, do I? Down through the main feed. There it goes there. That's running nice. Sometimes there's a little tiny filter in here, but um, as long as it's running, um, you haven't got to take, take this, this rod out. And if you take the rod out, sometimes it, it doesn't go back right. But that seems to be running lovely, no problem there. And run it back the same way in which it came as well. That's done. Um, you won't get nothing through that on there, that's one way valve. Um, and that's a carburetor done. So yeah, super, super happy with that. The carburetor can now go back together. So first thing to do is get your, get your float, put your float and needle back in to sit in a little tiny hole just there. Sit that in, and then grab your your float needle pin. Just lift the lift, lift the float up slightly, and just just ease that back into place. Well, it's just a bit of bit of fiddly pokery, and it go in there. Is Ella? Your emulsion tube is to go in next. Now your emulsion tube. See the see the narrower side of your emulsion tube. One slightly thicker, and one slightly narrow. The narrowing goes in first. Stick that in, and get your jet. Obviously, you want your your head of your jet to go in last. That goes in. I'm mean, just gonna tighten that little tiny jet up and just well seat it, okay? Just well seat it. That's all you have to do. Once it's well seated, just give it just a little tiny bit of force. And there's a little tiny bit of dirt just on that float. Is that a float just there? Let's see, just there. Let's get rid of that. We don't that. We got no dirt. So tip the carburetor up. A little tiny spray. Just to run any dirt out. Next, you want to just want to put in your slow idle circuit jet, which is this one here. Let's just pick that up. And that's been drilled, remember, or, or drilled, just cleaned out with a drill. And it only goes in one or two ways, but it's got to go in flat side up. Okay? It can't go in, it can't go in like that. Okay, that's wrong. It has to go in flat side. Go like that. Push it in all the way home. That's gone in. And then get your little screw, which sits on top of it. That keeps it in place. And screw that in. And what you're looking for, you're looking for around about. Uh, three threads on the front side of this, which will come out of here. Three threads coming out the other side. Start seeing coming out now. One, two, there's about three there, that'd be fine. Okay, and that's that all in now in place, looking rather, rather lovely. That's good. Next thing to do would be to get your bowl. Now, with your bowl, you've got these two holes, one at the bottom, one at the front, okay? The front one wants to go opposite to here, so it wants to sit perpendicular, like that, okay? If it's around this way, you won't be able to flood it. Uh, un un unflood the carby, so put it around that way and you'll be good to go. And there's two different two different size um, bolts here, both be a 10 mil, but one's slightly shorter than the other. This one here will go in the bottom, this one here will go on the side. Now make sure they're both done up relatively tight, you don't want to be doing overhanging on this because what will happen is you'll snap the carburetor jetting itself. So don't, don't overhang on it, but literally just nick it up, which is well seated, and make sure you do both. And once they're just well seated, then you can just get hold of one and just tighten up a bit more. So well seated and then nick it up. And that's it, that's your carburetor clean. Let's get it back onto the machine, get it all fitted and we'll go from there. Okay, so now we're back onto the lawnmower. I've got my carburetor and it only goes one way around. This little tiny fuel hose here needs to be facing round towards the back, which goes on this tiny fuel hose just here. So just slide that on into place. Once that's on, there's that little tiny governor arm we took off earlier on. That's one we took off last. Remember this little tiny one arm here? Just open your throttle up very, very slightly. Twist, twist the throttle arm towards the front. Hold it with your finger. Lift up your rod and just slide it into place. Now, it can be a bit tricky, but mine's gone in pretty much straight away. If you find you can't get it in, just loosen that screw very slightly. That plastic screw done up earlier on. Loosen that off, put it in, and then do it screw back up again, just so there's three threads hanging outside the backside, okay? With that done, we can now put our... Um, our fuel hose back into place. Okay, and we can then release the fuel 
and put our little tiny clamp back into place. Now I generally think the reason that this stopped working was because the idle circuit was blocked. The little tiny plastic one that we drilled out. That's what I think was actually blocked on this machine. With that now done, carburetor is now on and I'm just sort of waiting, waiting for the inevitable to happen, for fuel to come out the bottom of the carburetor and to leak everywhere. But as long as you're careful and you do all this stuff up, then you shouldn't get a leak. If you get a bit of a leak here, okay, underneath, that means either one of these isn't done up enough or you need to take the bowl back off and reseat it again. Maybe there's a bit of a, a kink in the O-ring underneath here, but as long as you're careful, it shouldn't leak at all. So that should be good. Next thing to do would be to get your, your air box air filter on. Don't forget when you do this, you mustn't, you mustn't forget this little tiny crankcase breather. It sits up on a little tiny um, pipe just up here, just come off of there. It sits up onto that, okay, and then it sits perpendicular onto this little tiny hole um, just here. So you have to sort of fit it as you go. So just squeeze it on. Now I'll get my hands in the way just to do it. I need to access the way the cookie crumbles. Get it on into place. Make sure it's on at the back as well. And then just slide that over the top onto them two bolts. You've got two little tiny 10 mils here. And all we're gonna do is just gonna whiz them up. Now, I've got impacts. You may just have a, a spanner and a socket set. It's absolutely brilliant. If you haven't got any of that, you need to try and figure a way around it, guys, right? But I've got little tiny um, impact. Put that on setting number one so it doesn't, doesn't um, over tighten it. That'd be lovely. Get my air filter, that's really important because it needs, obviously, be sucking too much air in if you don't have the, the air filter on. And then air box goes on. There you go. Now, hopefully, th this little procedure can be done inside 20 minutes, right? Half hour if you don't know quite if you're watching the video, but 15 minutes and this could be up and running and your missus could be off your case in no time at all. And all I used pretty much was a 10 mil socket or, or spanner, a set of forceps or a set of mole grips to, to clamp it off. I used a set of um, jet nose needle files um, just to clean the car right up as well. A little bit of WD-40. That was pretty much it, wasn't it? I set, I set a pair of pliers just to take the, hose, the, the fuel hose off as well. So, you know, I've used five bits of tools, which you could probably buy for about you know, four or five pound at a pound shop, something like that. And hopefully, with that done, your lawn mower will be up and running. So let's take it outside, see how we get on, and hopefully we'll uh, get it running. Just don't forget to put on your HT lead once you're finished. Otherwise, it won't start. Right, so with the lawnmower now off the bench and on the grass, all that's left to do is give it two or three pumps. Give it a quick little pull. And again. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe. There you go. Power drive work. Yeah. No hunting, no surging. My mate can now cut his grass and his wife can get off his back. Right, so there you go. One um, web lawnmower now all up and running. So if you just took your lawnmower out of your shed or storage, put some petrol in, pull the cord, and <sighs> it don't run and start, then that could be the video for you. Generally, a very, very quick carburetor clean could fix that. It could be a spark plug issue also, or <laughs> anything else that generally is lack of, lack of maintenance. And if you just leave a machine over the winter, then that could be a problem. So if your lawnmower didn't start, try taking the um, spark plug out, cleaning it, or put a brand new plug back in. Um, that may also get you running, but nine times out of 10, it is generally fuel related. So. Make sure you either run your engine completely out of fuel, use a four-stroke Aspen fuel at the end of the year, or um, keep your machine running by topping your, your, your lawnmower up with fresh fuel and all the way through the winter, just fire it up for 10, 15 minutes. That will keep it running as well. But if you leave it in the shed, where the moisture can get to it, then that will be the same problem you can see just there. But within 20 minutes, you could be up and running too. If this is your first time watching Mixed Murder Murder Man, hit the old subscribe button, not whack the old bell. That way you'll be told next time we'll have another video. We look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Miles very, very soon. But until then, guys and girls, much more importantly, Get take it easy.